What's up everybody, this is John with John Fair Innovations and I'm so excited to bring you today's lesson. So today I'm going to show you how to calculate density using water. Now before I get into the video, if you enjoy it, do make sure you hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment on maybe another science topic you'd like me to tackle, and if you really enjoy the video, do make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date for all the videos as they come out. Now, density is obviously going to change depending on the, the compound or the substance that you're using. Say, the density of air, for example, is going to be very different than the density of water. So obviously, what we're doing today is going to be very specific to water. But the same principles can be applied when you're trying to find the density of other substances. Now, today, all you're going to need to do this is, you, all you're going to need are scales, a jug, and some water. Now, when we're finding the density of something, density is a ratio of mass to volume. Now, mass is the weight of something, and volume is the liquid version of this. So, milliliters, liters, these sort of items. So, density is a ratio between that. And how we solve that is simply using the formula of density equals mass divided by volume. So in order for us to find the density of water, we're going to need a mass of water and we're also going to need a volume. So it's a good thing I've got my jug and my scales. Okay, so what we've got here is our jug. Obviously the jug is 81 grams, so we want to set that to zero because what we actually want is the grams of the water. We don't really care about the grams of the jug. So I'm just going to set that to zero and then that's now going to be perfect for us when we put our water in. Okay, so it's a bit hard to see on the camera there, but what I've done is I've measured out 500 mils of water. Now what we're going to do is, so our scales are set to negative 81, negative 82, because there's a little bit of a breeze at the moment, so that's why it's just changing slightly. But that's from set earlier, so in that way then when I put my jug on, I don't have to worry about calculating in regards to what the, the jug weighs. So I can put my 500 mils on our scales, and you can see that it weighs exactly 500 grams. Okay, so that is obviously going to be the mass, because this now lets us know how much it weighs in terms of grams. So now all we're going to have to do is take our two values, our 500 grams and our 500 milliliters, and we're going to put that into the density formula for us to solve. And then we'll have the density of water. Awesome, so we've got our two measurements. We've got our volume being 500 milliliters, and we've got our mass being 500 grams. So now we need to put these back into our formula to find the density. But we can't just simply put these two values into the formula, because density is actually a ratio of units given as kilograms per cubic meter. So we're going to have to change these two measurements in order for it to satisfy our equation, or in this case, our density units. So firstly, what we're going to need to do is convert grams into kilograms. Well, there are a thousand grams in one kilogram. So if we want to turn grams into kilograms, we simply divide by 1000. So that's what we'll do. We'll take our 500 grams and we'll divide it by a thousand. And that's going to leave us with 0.5 kilos, or 0.500 kilos, depending on how you want to say it. Next, we're going to have to convert the milliliters into cubic meters. And this one's a little bit trickier. But just know that cubic, one cubic meter is exactly the same as a thousand liters. So keep that in mind. But firstly, what we'll do is we'll convert the milliliters into liters. So again, there are a thousand milliliters in one liter. So if we want to turn milliliters into liters, we simply divide by a thousand, the same as what we did before. So again, it's going to be 500 milliliters divided by a thousand, and that's going to give us 0.5 liters, or 0.500 liters, depending on how you want to say it. Now, remember that with a cubic meter, there is a thousand liters. So we're actually doing the same conversion again, if we want to change liters into cubic meters, because there are a thousand liters in a cubic meter. So again, what we do is we take our liters and we divide by a thousand. So 0 0.5 divided by a thousand is going to give us 0 0.0005 cubic meters, or 0 0.000500, depending on if you kept the, the two zeros at the end or not. 
So now we have cubic meters and we also have kilos. So now all we have to do is simply put these two values back into our formula and solve it. So remember our density formula is mass divided by volume. So in this case, our density for water is going to be 0.5 kilos divided by 0.0005 cubic meters. And what we end up getting is 1,000, or rather 1,000 kilos per cubic meter. So there you go, that is the density of water. And if you actually check this out yourself, this is actually an identity. So we've clearly done it right, that the density of water is in fact 1,000 kilos per cubic meter. Well, thank you so much. Hopefully you enjoyed that. So that's how density is calculated. So you give it a go yourself, have, have a practice at it, maybe try with other, uh, other liquids, maybe soft drink, for example, is, is another great one. But always stay safe, be kind to one another, and I'll see you next time.